So I, I agreed to do the whatever podcast. I don't know if you've heard okay. of it. Okay, let's just so take a pause. Okay. Let's find it. Because I'm pretty sure the whatever podcast is despicable. Because here's what it seems to me to do. Mm -hmm. And I know the fella's probably going to watch. So I'm going to call it despicable anyway. It seems like it takes the anger of young men. And directs it at, at vulnerable at, at women. Stu at stu stupid. No, that's too harsh a word. Just okay. vulnerable. Vulnerable well, women. Well, no, vulnerable is too sympathetic. Okay. There is like an unintelligent They're culpable women somewhat. that they put on the show mm -hmm. with like cleavage. I am smarter than the hot 18-year-old. We're smart, Jay stupid. That seems to be there. Well, basically, the, the trope you could say is they take OnlyFans. Oh, is that what it is? So I got no idea about it. You tell yeah. me what it is. Um, well, they do. They've done. I think they're kind of figuring themselves out. Basically. I hope that they crash and burn. Oh, I found it. You're just not in the title. So oh. I think that there's some people involved with good intentions at the podcast, but it's creating a space where you're having conversations that are not really happening anywhere else on the internet. At least I haven't seen. Okay. Maybe that's way too optimistic about it. <laughs> Do you um, agree with my assessment that it takes these women yeah. and just makes fun of them and it just feeds oh, yeah. angry men? I, like, th yeah, I, think, I think it does a lot of that, but I think they also are having real, I mean, they had um, Michael Knowles on. I mean, he's a guy, he's not a woman, but they had, um, they're having women on that are not that category of women. But did they so. then pit you against these people? Poor girls who've never really thought through these issues to make them look silly. I felt more if I was pitted, it was more I was actually debating against this gentleman who was there for the sort of pro uh -huh. promiscuity route. Okay. So I don't know. Maybe that was unusual for the podcast because their other episodes don't typically do that. But basically, I ended up having a sort of exchange with a guy that is part of that kind of Andrew Tate world. Um, his name's Justin, and he seemed like a very nice guy when I met him. But he basically said on the show that he thinks women should be faithful, but men don't wow. need to be. How convenient. But, but unfortunately, there's these kind of guys, I think there's a, there, it's kind of a growing mantra. This is like, this some, is actually what them. effeminate men look like. How you should, go, you should go on the podcast. This is what effeminate men look like. Men who, mm. when Aquinas uses the word effeminacy, and he'll, I don't know what the mm. Latin is, but he uses it to mean men who do not, do not mm. persevere in what they are called to because it's difficult. Yeah. And it seems to me a man who says, I'm going to sleep around and that this is manly is an Well, the sad thing, thing about say. it too is like the Andrew Tate presentation is very macho, right? It's highly macho. It's I don't all really, about, not, I don't know much about it. I only discovered, like started learning about it maybe six months ago because it's seeping into, I think some parts of conservatism yeah. where I see oh, some God, conservative person. commentators praising some of the things that Andrew Tate says mm -hmm. because he's getting so, he's just getting more influential, I guess. And then I was like, okay, who, who's this person that's influencing people? Okay. And then you go look at the stuff that he says and you're like, what, what is this? And like, what does what, he very say? It's very misogynistic. Okay. I mean, it's, it's very, and watch, I mean, I I'm curious what your, your folks are going to say, your, your podcast listeners, but okay. um, there's a lot of Andrew Tate fans that are very bought into his presentation of manliness. And so they don't like anybody criticizing him mm. because they think people are too highly critical of men in our culture anyways. Oh, get over it. Like and a so, soft reaction from men. Thursday, yeah. am I wrong? I know you're the Gen Z guy, so maybe like I'm misinterpreting this, but if no, you're a dude I who don't. can't handle criticism and okay, like there's can't criticism, be faithful. But the reason Andrew Tate is popular mm -hmm. is because we are in a society that is blaming all societal ills on men and he's the only one one refusing it all to apologize and men who feel hurt run to that. I'm not saying it's yeah. right, but that's the reason. Yeah. It's not because they can't take criticism. It's because he's the only one refusing to take any and they want that. Okay. Well, I think it's because they're looking for an identity and their identity is just getting crushed mm. by society. That's what they feel, may feel. Yeah. And so Andrew Tate is promising this very masculine identity that doesn't apologize for itself, including its own faults. Mm. See, and this, is what, this is what happens when you don't accept the fall. Yes, it's like true. we are broken men and women mm -hmm. and Christ wants to heal us so that mm -hmm. our desires can be in line with objective reality. Mm -hmm. And when you don't agree to the fall or if you don't mm -hmm. accept Christ as your savior, you end up justifying sexual sin and normalizing it. Like I think Prager did mm -hmm. on my show, because what else are you mm -hmm. going to do? Yeah, but. it's true. It's true. But I think that the the advantage is when you have someone who is at least 
active in an ideology period and they're like online doing stuff mm -hmm. and there's crossover happening where their ideas are being challenged, they'll watch that, which is back to the whatever podcast, the reason I agreed to go on because it was like four hours. So I mean, it was a long, I want you to, I, I, I don't want to cut you off, but I do just want to insert yeah. something real quick. Like I'm all for open discussions, mm -hmm. especially about things that we're not talking about. And mm -hmm. obviously there can be merit in that. But the only thing I've seen in this whatever podcast, mm -hmm. and it was like 20 seconds, was mm -hmm. these guys who brought on women who didn't know what they were talking about mm -hmm. and they made them look stupid. Well, I think they brought on, brought, bring on a lot of people, men and women who don't know what they're talking oh, okay. about. But I don't think that they think all of them don't know what they're talking about. Does that make sense? No, I know that, but you should know that they don't and not just bring them on to look well, stupid. Well, I think the host, again, not no offense to the host, but I don't know that the host has a fully developed Is he a view. Christian? I don't think so. Mm. Yeah. That would help. Yeah. So tell us about- Well, if what... he was a Christian, I don't think the show would be the way that it is. Okay. So tell us about oh, you how, how you went on, what so, that was like. Well, I went on it and um, they had the kind of cast of different folks that were living kind of their own version of- I guess you could say the dating world, OnlyFans. I mean, that kind of, it's under the dating cover, but obviously OnlyFans is just prostitution, like yes. a form of, it's pornography. Yeah. Um, and then they had this guy who's a friend of Andrew Tate's on. I'm not sure why he was on, but he was on to kind of talk about his view on dating. In the Chiron, friend of Andrew Tate. <laughs> cool. That's how I, I mean, his name is Justin, but okay. he was very proudly a friend of Andrew Tate. Like close, they, they do business together, I, okay. I think. So that got me interested because I was like, okay, let's let's see what your worldview is all about. Like, what is this? What is this about? Because they say a lot of things that sound conservative. Like he was saying pornography is a menace. So he was like disagree. He was say, telling the OnlyFans ladies that pornography is a menace and they shouldn't be doing pornography. So I was like, okay. And then he's saying at the same time that he would go on and have multiple. He he would be. He thinks it's okay to have multiple women as a man. Mm -hmm. but women just need one man. So it's it's actually, I think the root of it is Islam because I think Andrew Tate converted to mm -hmm. Islam and yeah, they permit polygamy. So that's mm -hmm. where it comes from, where they kind of put a veneer of even religiosity on it. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying he did that, but I think that's what Tate does. It's almost a veneer of religiosity on yeah. what is effectively promiscuity. Yeah, it justifies your weakness. Yeah. And it makes it look yeah. virtuous. Yeah. Are you wanting to be a role model for your kids? Is that part a of a thousand your percent? A father should show up in every way for his children. Mm -hmm. I think I'll be better than most fathers, regardless of how many children mm -hmm. I have. I might have a hundred. Mm -hmm. But so. you think part of being a role model, it's okay for your kids not to know even their your relationship status with their own mom? They will know the relationship status with me and their mother. But you have other relationships with other women too. What, what does that have to do with anything? But I'm just wondering if you think I haven't even said that. I'm just saying, like, if I mm -hmm. want to, I will. But you don't think that's a problem for your daughter to know that about their dad? That, that he has multiple mistresses. That's up to my daughter, man, you know. But do you want your daughter to have a guy like that long-term? If he takes care of her in every way and she has a much better life because of it, yeah, I'm cool with that. One thing I can say as a man is I know for a fact that a man can love a woman and sleep with other women and not be in love with those other women. Men and women are also wired, yeah, wired completely very different. different. And I agree with you. And that's, I and that's, have sex that's why it's a problem for me. Action. That's a, why it's a problem for me. So if, if I love a girl, there's no having sex with other guys. Yeah. Because if she loves me, she she doesn't even see other men. Yeah. You know, other men are invisible. If you're in love with mm -hmm. a man, other other men are mm -hmm. invisible. So how? So we mentioned the what, whatever it's called podcast. Mm -hmm. How how did you? So you were chatting with a fella who said men should be able to fornicate, <laughs> and, and that's just how manly of them to be able to do that. So how did the conversation go? Did you? I presume you tried to rebuke him. I did. In a gen, I, I tried to, well, I, more than a rebuke even, I just got curious about his worldview and I started asking him questions like, well, would you, would you want your daughters to be with men like that? And do you, would you want your kids to know that that's how you're living? Like, you know, I wanted to kind of understand him. I'm sure he just him. bit the bullet. And he did not like that. He did not like being asked this question. So he kind of bristled and was like, don't ask me questions. So I'm like, we're on a dating podcast to talk about yeah. our views on dating. <laughs> yeah. Don't so be so sensitive. Was, that's what you should have said. <laughs> you're acting like a woman. Why are you being so sensitive? <laughs> I think the comment section said that for me. Okay. So, Do you regret yeah. being on the show? I don't. Did you know what you were walking into? A little bit, but it got, it was kind of more crazy than I thought it would be. And to be honest, when I got home, I told my husband, I'm like, I think that was maybe a waste of time. But then afterwards, hearing, getting messages from people and hearing their responses, I was like, that actually touched a lot more people than I thought it would. 
And so that's what made me think, okay. And that's what I thought originally, that's why I agreed to go on because I saw people responding to it and being affirmed in the good or learning to reject the bad because it, it paints the good and the bad so clearly. And it just opens, leaves it on the table. I mean, the fact that, let's just say this, the fact that girls who do OnlyFans are willing to sit at a table for four hours and hear people talk to them about it and hear about why it's maybe not best for them and sincerely listen. Like they're, they're sincerely listening. I know people listening to this might be like, no, they're not. They're just on it for clicks. No, I mean, these are girls that are just trying to make their way in the world. Obviously they're doing something evil, but they have their own backgrounds. They have their own situations. But I think having that opportunity to have that conversation openly, it's I, in front of anybody who's going to listen and they get millions of views. I think it's awesome. What bit's awesome? that people are seeing clearly, because I think the truth wins out in those conversations, people are seeing clearly, okay, evil as evil and good as good. Okay. Maybe it was I too harsh on the podcast. I think you were a little harsh. I do think you're right that it does. I think there's a tendency to objectify women. Like even the, some of the things that the host did, I didn't approve of, I didn't like what he did. Um, I don't think he has to do that for the podcast, right? So I think there's ways that th they can improve it. Yeah. But creating a space where conversations happen with people that are radically different so I think there's value to that. Let me see. Let me. I wish I had said yeah. this in the beginning instead of just like shooting off at the yeah. hip. But That's okay. my understanding of the podcast was they're bringing these women in who don't know at all what they're talking about and making them look like idiots. That was yeah. the like 10 second, or maybe I've watched like two or three clips. I think that's what done, it looked like. I think they have done some of that. Which just but, seemed like, a, just real yeah. quick, that just seemed like a way to throw red meat to men who are frustrated at women in society. Hey, thanks for watching that clip. Would you like this beautiful, very high quality, definitely not made in China, not that there's anything wrong with that, Pints with Aquinas Beer Stein for free, sent to your door? Would you also like a copy of The Jill sent to your door four times a year? This is the Pints with Aquinas newspaper, by the way. If you do, go to mattfrad.locals.com and become an annual supporter for any amount. We'll send you that stuff for free and you get a bunch of other free things in return. You'll get more information by going over to mattfrad.locals.com. Thanks.